What's in the puzzle box? Who knows? What's in the puzzle box? Yeah, what is in this puzzle box? Well, this is a Sherlock Holmes puzzle box. And we have the, uh, the, uh, the inscription on the side here by Sherlock Holmes himself. And it says, when you have eliminated the impossible... I can't read. I haven't got my glasses on, folks. Hang on a minute. What does it say? Well, maybe I'll take these off my help. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Right, there we go. That's it. So that's what's in this puzzle box. What is indeed inside this puzzle box? And how do we get into it? Right, folks. So this I received as a birthday present from my wonderful wife. And it's just a very simple, very light um, kind of puzzle box thing. And there's a slot at the side here. And that's, that's all there appears to be to it. Nothing, nothing like that looks like it's going to be a, a right tussle to get in with, which unfortunately there wasn't a lot to it, to tell you the truth, folks. When I started mucking about with it, I just gently sort of went around the sides looking to see what was going to happen here. And this, does this bit move? It didn't want to break anything because... Um, I didn't say don't use force or the usual kind of stuff. So what I found though was this bit here was the only sort of bit that kind of moved and so was this. So it had to be something to do with a pair of them. So as I, I twisted this bit it just kind of moved like that. I thought okay here we go and having had years of, well actually there you go, having had years of expertise with puzzles this sort of popped off and I thought right here we go this will be it then. And, and that was basically it, folks. That, that was it. And what came out was a Sherlock Holmes coin. And that was all we got with him smoking his pipe. There it is. So I was very, very disappointed, man, because that took me about, what, maybe five minutes to do in all. Um, yeah, so, and for the, the price of it, you know, it was just uh, not worth the money. And it was so simple to solve. Um, as I said, I was most most upset by the uh, the easiness of getting getting the puzzle done, and then you just sort of reset it and um, pass it on to the next person, and, and they solve it within two seconds as well. So there we go, folks. That was it. The rather pathetic uh, Sherlock Holmes puzzle box. Um, I thought there'd be a bit more to it, but it's uh, no. So that gets a rather pathetic 2 out of 10 on the ometer, folks. 2 out of 10, that's pathetic. What a start of the year. Right, folks, in my Christmas sack this year, uh, I received a set of these uh, clackers. Now, these were around in the 70s, and they were actually barred from school because bits of the plastic would fly off and everything. And I think they had a bit of a, a, bit of a resurgence back in, the, back in the 90s or the 2000s, and I think they got barred for the same reason as well. They make this colossal noise. And um, I think the trick was to sort of get them clacking and then you sort of made them go clack, 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 clack. You did, you made them go clack, 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 clack. But I can only make them sort of just do this. And then even then it can't do it. It seems to tangle up at the top here. Like it seems to go all twisted up there. So yeah, this is the, I don't know, hang on. Stand back folks. There must be some a skill in an actor because I, I just can't do it at all, man. Oh, oh, that was oh, that was not bad for me actually. That's the first time I've managed to do that. I'll try it again. Don't know what I did there, but oh, now see that's it. It's all gone wrong. That must have just been a, a jammy one-off. I'll try again though. It's kind of clacking this time. No, they're, they're stuck. What's happened? Come on. Right. Got the jump start there. Oh, oh, man. That wasn't too bad, was it? Right. We'll start. Try again. Oh, goodness me. Wow. Right, here we go again. Oh, yeah, man. All right, I kind of got the hang of it now. Right, here we go. I thought you had to sort of build it up and build it up, but 
I think you can just do it after a couple of goes actually. So. <laughs> All right, we'll try again. It's kind of scared that I whack my thumb or something on this. We'll go up one more try. No. Well, anyway, you get the idea of it. So that was uh, back in the back in the seventies at our school. That's all you heard in the playground was digga, 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 that sort of noise. So there we go. Well, I surprised myself there. I managed to actually do it. Excellent. All right, folks. Now I also got this in my Christmas sack as well, which is like I think they're called the manacles, and uh, you're supposed to just separate them obviously. And um, since Christmas Day, I've tried and I haven't managed to. Uh, to separate them as of yet so but I like puzzles like this where it takes you a while to think about it um, rather than this pathetic box which took about four seconds to solve this has taken me at least four or five days and I still haven't managed to to get it sorted out yet I can almost feel it sort of coming along the way there it's gonna be one of these puzzles that you just sort of slide about and then all of a sudden it's gonna go badink 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 and that's gonna be it solved and you haven't got a clue how you did it. So that's, uh, hopefully, by the end of the day, we will have this one solved. Anyway, folks, listen, thank you all very much indeed for, for sticking around. Um, we'll be back on track again, getting more videos out and about. This tier four lockdown is just hopeless, folks. You just can't get out. I can't go meet bro, I can't meet my mates. You just can't go out. And the weather's been absolutely rubbish. It's really slidey and cold and miserable out there today. It's almost like sleety and slidey. Almost went my length as I took uh, the wife to work today. So uh, it's just been a really sort of miserable period over the last month or two. So, um, but as I said, folks, thank you all very much for, for sticking around and uh, do do stick around because uh, I'll be trying to do sort of more in the house sort of projects and things. And I don't, I don't know, we just have to try and um, and, and do sort of more, more things. Um, Frankie, Frankie got himself a uke. Did you see it, man? So, System Skynet got himself a you. System Skynet got himself a you. System Skynet got himself a you. Yeah, now for those of you who haven't uh, really uh, play an instrument or or uh, have seen a uke before, it's got a rather unusual tuning. It goes G C E A, and the C string here is the thickest string. Now on a guitar, it goes from the thickest string down to the thinnest. But a uke has got a rather strange. But it's got a lovely and the chord G C E A is actually an A minor seventh, so so that chord itself. Yeah, so a rather intriguing little instrument, I must say. Um, the ukes I've got, how many have I got? One, two, three, I think I've got about four ukes. Um, and this one is, I think, it's, I think it's the best one I've got. This one's like a, I think it's a tenor and a soprano and uh, a telecaster. Well, I've got one in the shape of a telecaster up here. Where is it? Here it is. Do, 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 but it was only about 15 quid or something, this one. So it's. Uh, and, uh, see the trouble with, with these cheap ukes, man. If you buy any cheap uke, the trouble is the machine heads and the strings don't stay in tune at all, man, because with the heat and, uh, you know, just atmospheric conditions and the way you play. Yeah, see, it just sounds terrible, doesn't it? Now, the way you normally tune it is, you know, my dog has fleas. That's what they say. Yeah, so as I was saying, the, uh, it depends on the, the quality of the strings and the machine heads. Um, the, these strings are really, really thin strings. And you just can't really do anything with them. You, to get a decent sound on a uke, you really need to spend about 150 quid, up to 200 quid on it and get some really good, there are good strings out there, Cat Gut or something, I can't remember what they were called now, but they, they, they stay in tune a lot longer.
See, how bad does that sound? Sounds awful, man. As I said, with a with a better set of uh, uke strings on there, um, and it's just it's very thin veneer that as well, so it doesn't doesn't give you a, a nice loud sound at all, man. This one's just for show more than anything. It's just in the shape of a, a Telecaster, and uh, of course me being left-handed as well doesn't help matters. It's not too bad on a uke because you've only got the four strings, but with a guitar, obviously being left-handed is a lot uh, worse when it's uh, with the six strings. But with the uke, it's not too bad. But it just still it just makes it awkward and the whole thing feels weird, man, you know? That's the only thing about being left-handed. I love being left-handed, it's great. But it's just when it comes to playing guitars and ukuleles, it all feels strange and weird. Right, folks, now the first tune that I ever wrote on a, on a uke was one about my frozen shoulder. And I used to bore everybody stupid with this tune because it was the first tune I'd ever written. I just picked up the uke, basically tuned it and uh, learned a couple of quick chords and then just sang this song. I've got a frozen shoulder and it really is quite sore. Oh, I've got a frozen shoulder and quite frankly, it's become a bore Got to go to the physio I've got to go to the physio Got to go to the physio I've got to go to the physio Cause as I'm getting older <laughs> I've got a frozen shoulder Oh yeah, quite lately it's become really sore Anyway, something like that And uh, I was really proud of myself for writing that and then as I progressed, I learned, you've got to learn the George Formby song, you know, because everybody goes, when you tell them, oh, I'm playing the uke, they go, oh, go and play as um, a George Formby song. So you have to go. I can't remember how that goes now. But uh, yeah, so you learn sort of different chords and little jazzy things, you know. And as you progress, you keep picking it up and, you know, one day you'll find something else to play and you go, oh yeah, man. And then next day you'll pick it up and you'll, you'll find yourself playing. <laughs> and it's a great fun thing, man, I must admit. It really is a, a great, a great thing to play because, you know, it doesn't mean you have to get the acoustic out and, you know, strum away and make a loud noise. Whereas the, the uke, it's just you can play nice and softly. And I write, uh, tend to write daft things when I'm on the uke. And it doesn't take you long to, to work out chords. And uh, if you know music, you can pick up this and probably have a bang in a tune out of this in a, in a, you know, a few minutes, more or less. Anyway, right, well, I'm still kind of not back to normal, folks. As you can hear in my voice, it's really um, still a bit husky and a bit a bit rough. But, uh, yeah, ever since that day I fell into the dichty, the day I fell into the dichty, man, I just I just haven't been, been right since then. But um, we're getting there now, folks. You can feel it. It's all, it's, it's, it's away now. It's away. I am on the road, the Roman road to recovery, folks. So hopefully Jag lives is back on track, folks. The Golden Jag is back on track, folks. Thank you. Now, in my Christmas uh, bag, folks, that I've got this year, I've received a set of these. Now, remember these? These are these um, clackers, I think. They were called retro clackers. And these, um, when... At school, oh, hang on a minute.